Sustainability involves practices that encourage long-term growth and flourishing. In the environment, this means using wind power and growing more gardens and trees. In the community, it means living the seven teachings. Love, truth, honesty, humility, respect, wisdom, and courage. Behind the idea of sustainability is the notion that all aspects are part of a living whole. Human, animal, plant, water, mineral, air, and light are intertwined. In the same way, a human community is an interconnected whole. Unsustainability involves short-term, short-sighted practices. These practices happen in the environment when we produce non-reusable waste, such as plastic water bottles. There are also unsustainable community practices, such as treating people poorly. People are not just individuals, they're part of a sustainable community. A community is intellectual, emotional, creative, physical, economic, spiritual, social unity. Everyone is working together to make it happen. Hi, I'm an Argyle student and I'm here to tell you about a project we have developed. Our project is titled Growing Plants Using Renewable Energy. The project is sponsored by the Worldwide Wildlife Federation. Our project involves growing vegetables, herbs and possibly flowers. Argyle has had a large solar panel installed on our outdoor educational classroom. We'll be using it to power our energy efficient LED lighting system for our plants and seedlings until they are ready to be transplanted in the outdoor educational garden. For this project, we'll be using state-of-the-art equipment. Hi, we're Argyle students and we're cutting the wood for our raised outdoor garden. The wood being used for this project has been recycled from a, a garage that was being torn down. We're staining the wood for the garden's box. Okay. We just finished digging the post for the outdoor garden. We're using solar power to power the drill. I just finished installing the tarp to prevent the roots from growing through the boards in our outdoor garden. Right now I'm in the process of filling the outdoor garden with the earth. Okay, we've uh, finished building our outdoor uh, garden here and now we'll be ready to put our vegetables and herbs and perhaps some flowers into it. We have just finished planting our plants in the outdoor garden. These plants are grown using solar and wind energy. Water is essential to plant life. Argyle's outdoor garden provided tomatoes, onions, and peppers to community members this year. So I'm standing in front of Argyle Alternative High School with Jessica. We're just trying to figure out what's with the wind turbine. The turbine was installed last year, props to John Dankel for pioneering this important technology into Manitoba schools. That's some pretty good stuff. You're generating electricity by just using the wind. The more wind, the more electricity is generated. Here we are in John's science room. Here's the cord that's connected to the wind turbine. Let's take a look inside this power cabinet. Inside the power cabinet, there's a battery being powered by the wind turbine and solar panels. The battery powers the lights that are used for the plants. These are low energy lights. We can use 12 of them with our system. The electricity is coming from the wind turbine. We also have a solar panel. The plants convert electricity into peppers, which are used in our cafeteria. These are peppers that are growing with the power of the wind. We're 
absorbing the wind energy right now. Wicked. Water covers 70% of Earth's surfaces and is vital to all known forms of life. Access to safe drinking water has improved steadily and substantially over the last few decades in almost every part of the world. There is a clear correlation between safe drinking water and GDP per capita. Some observers have estimated that by the year 2025, half of the world will be facing water-based vulnerability. Water is essential to all of life. Wisdom and humility is needed in how we use our water. Humans, animals, and plant life are all threatened by the way we use our water. In Manitoba, we have vast amounts of water compared to the rest of the world. By not yeah. polluting our lakes, we have access to clean drinking water. At Argyle, we have installed new low-flow water taps. Our use of hydroponics helps us see how water is essential to growing food. Argyle is half a block away from the Red River. The river reminds us of the beauty of water and how we need to respect it. Contemplating the river helps us reflect on the gift of water. Hi, I'm Alec Peters. I presented this video last year as part of a keynote presentation for a Youth Encouraging Sustainability Conference at Okamak Marsh. This conference was sponsored by the Science Council Manitoba. I also presented it last year at the Manitoba Water Conservation Conference in Brandon. As a result of this process, I am more concerned about the access to safe water globally. Everyday lack of access to clean water and sanitation kills thousands. In fact, every 20 seconds, a child dies from a water-related disease. Almost 1 billion people lack access to safe water globally. The water and sanitation crisis claims more lives through disease than any war claims through guns. Children living in poverty can often carry up to a thousand parasitic worms. Most people who need safe drinking water survive on less than two dollars a day. You may be thinking you want to do something about this problem of access to safe water and sanitation. You may be thinking all these problems are far away from you and me. You may be surprised to know that in your own backyard, just an hour flight away from Winnipeg, there are four reserves at Island Lake that have severe water problems. The people of Island Lake reserves have less water than people living in refugee camps. These reserves have poor sanitation and no running water. The irony is, they live in a province with one of the higher concentrations of water in the world. Canada is also one of the richest countries in the world. Skin conditions and chronic diarrhea are common in reserve homes where it is hard to find enough water to keep clean. But sometimes the results are more deadly. Superbug infections and killer flus are closer to becoming a reality on reserves. For example, St. Teresa Point was ground zero for the H1N1 virus. That level of danger should have been a wake-up call for the government of Canada to take the water problems of remote Manitoba reserves more seriously. Ironically, there have been numerous Manitoban campaigns to raise money to bring clean water and other needs to the third world. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been given to worthy causes. It would take far less to solve the water problems in northern reserves. I strongly urge you to do at least one of the following. Sign the petition, Water is a Human Right, at petitions24.com. Write your MP addressing the water crisis, or make a donation at safewater.org or phone the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs to see what you can do. Our pond ecosystem is separated into three different parts, the composter, the aquarium, and the swamp. First, there's the composter. 
second there's the aquarium. And third is the swan. The top component is also part of the swan. And the first part of our ecosystem is the composter. We put food scraps from the calf in the compost. The bacteria in the compost breaks it down into nutrients. In the aquarium, the fish and plants consume the nutrients created by the bacteria. The aquarium plants help purify the water. The abiotic components of the aquarium are rocks, mud, water, and light. It's a pretty big rock in there. It sure is. The third part is the swamp. It's what keeps the ecosystem together. An algae scrub is what forms on the glass. It's cleaning chemical imbalances and bacteria. The algae absorbs the carbon dioxide from the respiration of the plants. Fish and frogs reuse this oxygen. It creates more carbon dioxide and the cycle continues. At the top of the aquarium is the other part of the swamp. This is where the land creatures and the plants live. The worms process the nutrients from the soil. The water cabbage and the duckweed use the nutrients. The crickets feed on plants. The frogs feed on the crickets. The air provides the oxygen. The light provides the energy. Without the light, nothing can live.